good day to everyone this is dr sivaraman of inoindustries.com that's nice thanks at center for confirming that audibility let me just play the powerpoint presentation asian session live market analysis on july 12th between 5 and 5:30 gmt we'll be tracking the market where exactly it is and what could be the possible move from here so we will use the live market code page to track the market i'll give the link for the same and you can open it in a browser i'll also fix the camera over that of the live market code page and I'll along with you what is happening in the market you know is currently trading around 1.2596 1.2598 the low is 1.2588 the high is 1.2646 the net change is 43 pips negative so from that of friday close euro has dropped about 43 pips that's what it refers to now when you refer to that of euro level on friday the euro went up almost above that of 1.27 and then made the slide and now it is seen below that of the psychological level 1.26 and 1.259 some 1.2599 or the current level and similarly gbb was trading about around that of 1.52 for a long time and came back to 1.5065 then went up again and now it is open lower and you come across 37 pips negative net change so currently gbb is trading around 1.5022 to 1.5026 the low is 1.5004 just slightly above that of the psychological level 1.50 the high is 1.5081 then in the case of yen it has gone above that of the 89 88 range and it has come to 89 area 8902 to 8905 are the current level 8859 is the low 8914 is the high then it changes 40 pips or 39 pips positive so in all three you come across the usd gaining moves to start with but in the case of usd ch of 1.0559 1.0562 or the current level is 1.0548 is the low 1.0583 is the high the net change is 14 pips negative when euro is showing a negative net change chf is also showing a negative net change it is a typical contrarian move as a result you find euro chf has dropped and it is showing about 61 pips negative net change 1.3305 1.3308 level 1.3306 is the low and the high is 1.336 after the opening of the high it has dropped about 61 pips from that of friday close then in the case of euro it is 41 pips negative net change and gbp 37 pips negative net change as a result you find euro gbp is nominally down by 5 pips and trading around 0.83 850.8388 area so you know that they normally when the volume is less they hand, try to handle the cross in that process you find that euro and gbp are showing negative net change n is showing a nominal positive net change and because of that euro n and gbp n are slightly showing a positive net change of 10 pips and 23 pips respectively so In the case of Canadian dollar, 1.0317, 1.0321 are the current level. 1.032, 0302 is the low. 1.0336 is the high. Negative net change is seen. So, which is again a yeah, contrarian move. Canadian dollar is showing USD weakening move, whereas the Swiss franc is showing USD gaining move. So, you find the contrarian move. Not only that. In the case of Australian dollar, 0.8742 is the low. 0.8740. Zero, uh, sorry, the current level is 0.874245. The low is 0.8734. The high is 0.8788. Net change is 33 pips negative. So when Canadian dollar is showing negative net change, and the Australian dollar is also showing negative net change, you can come across. They have contrarian move in in order to handle all the crosses. So 
basically when they are focusing on this sort of contrarian move they will be handling the cross to start with then only they will come to that of the majors so till such time you can only see the price action in the case of cross so let me just go to that of the powerpoint presentation and explain to you what is the expected move for today and then from there we will take up what could be the possible move we could see based on the market reading in japanese session swing and slide moves are expected in the case of euro gbp and yen then as contrary move then european session a quick drop and a form of move from that of the mid european session there could be a forming of move but that could be short lived then again during the us session there could be another drop or a slide during the early year session and then the firming up move or the rise could happen so it is a weak beginning so a false move or a slide could be seen in the case of euro gbp and yen before the quick rise they are expected to make from that of the late year session today so that could give the uh, idea for us how exactly they want to make the moves in this particular week so as far as this particular week is concerned that is 12th to 16th of july today that is 12th the slide in euro and gbp are expected with a form of move from that of the year session from the mid year session then tomorrow open high and then quick gains are expected in the case of euro and gbp they could cross friday high then day after tomorrow there is 14 it's a mid week and they are expected to vigorously gain the levels in the case of euro and gbp then subsequently 15th and 16th they are expected to make wide range swing and finally close it for the week at much higher level in the case of euro and gbp and also usd yen so friday will come across more action in the market and you will come across probably the spikes on thursday and friday so these are all the expected moves for this particular week besides the expected moves for the week for the day i have given it now when we refer to that of the initial lows and the highs set during the jap session between 230 and 330 gmt normally they start making the high or the low from the start of the session 0000 hours and finally they set it between 230 and 330 they finally set it set either the high to start with and then the low or the low to start with and then the high that is how they set the initial highs and the lows and they are being used effectively by the players in order to make for the moves in the market so in the case of euro 1.2588 is the low 1.2646 is the high both are intact and in the case of gbp 1.5004 1.5081 of the respective lows and the highs they are also intact and in the case of swiss franc also 1.0548 1.0588 are intact and yen is also lows and the highs are intact Australian dollar 0.8734 0.878 are intact. Then Canadian dollar 1.0302 and 1.0336 are also intact. So from that of the 233 GMT time till 5 GMT time, they are not breached either the high or the low. That is what the number was. But the net changes indicate that they are focusing on that of the cross. So you might see that. Uh, Euro, for example, they are keeping it closer to that of the low, and GBP also slightly away from that of the low. Then USDC is closer to that of the low. This sort of moves they do it. When Euro is near that of the low, CHF is expected to be near that of the high, whereas they are keeping it near that of the low without breaking the low. And similarly, in the case of yen, they are keeping it near that of the high. So, in the case of Australian dollar, they are keeping it near that of the low. so when the denominator and the numerator currencies are kept closer to the low and also in the case of canadian dollar you find that it is closer to the 1.0302 1.0319 is the current level so this is how 
without breaching the high and the low they are able to keep it closer to the of the high or closer to the of the high i mean low then subsequently bring in a nominal action in the case of the respective cross so that is why you come across in predominant of the currency you find negative net change excepting us the yen so these are all the readings we come across from that of the initial lows and the highs i explained the expected focus the swing and the slide so during the late europe japanese session they are expected to make the slide in the case of euro gbp and euro yen then a quick drop during that of the early european session and that drop could be a very nice drop of about 75 pips to 100 pips then firming up move could happen and that might be short lived and it may not be a very big rise then quickly they are expected to make slide again during the early your session and then gain the level that gain could be sustained and then tomorrow they are expected to open higher and then straight take it up with swing so you can decide when to enter into the market when to when to exit in the market based on the timings i have given it so in the name in the form of session so we will be able to estimate exactly the gmt times also but to be on this uh, safe side because there could be a slow move and the quick moves and things like that so i given the early mid and the late sessions of each of the sessions and you can just follow it as a uh, information for additional analysis of the market and try to take the positions and you could be benefited out of that so let me minimize the powerpoint presentation and focus the camera over that of the live market court page then take up the questions which are asked here then on it how is zero as the expected to behave today what is the level to take buy sell position <laughs> now current low is 1.2588 and i explained that they are expected to breach the levels and probably we could be able to see around 1.25 uh four five level or just go below that of the psychological level 1.2550 or even if they find more buys are happening during the drop they could go even slightly lower than the 1.25 and hit the stops and then come up so you can just watch how exactly they are handling 1.2545 or 50 area and also 1.2525 area and also 1.25 area and if they make a very quick downward stop and, and come up that means that is a low so normally they make three consistent drops quickly and set the low and the low is when it is not breached for more than 30 minutes then you can initiate the buy still our reading may be wrong so we have to use invariably the hedging order to limit the risk or the stop to get out of the position to enter at a lower level if the market drops further down but i am expecting further rise in the case of market so according to my understanding the dips are buy opportunities in market so what is the prospect of usdch at the moment they are handling usdch in a very consolidated mode and that is mainly to handle uh, cad ch of cross and also some of the ch of cross with euro and gbp the european process so obviously it will take a little more time for them to gain the levels probably tomorrow onwards they are expected to gain the levels probably do little more consolidation around the 1.05 area and denominator currencies you have to keep in mind that they are bound to make one side of moves so if you are on the right side then probably you should be able to exit it in the same day otherwise you might be forced to hold it for several days before exiting with a profit so the best way is to use the hedging and if they go against then try to book profit in the hedging and try to keep another hedging order to limit further risk then once they start gaining the level you try to book profit in your buy side as you know that they are making more and more of contrarian moves so when they are rising euro 
they could also rise here to see it just keep it in mind that don't immediately come to the conclusion that when euro is rising here this ch has to drop is it good time to buy usd cad now so usd cad it is currently trading around 1.0317 the low is 1.0302 you know very well that like a bouncing ball they used to make a quick downward stop and then gain so wait for such level and when they are doing consolidation simply making about 3 to 5 pips swing don't enter into the market when they become very active you try to enter into the market at the moment they are handling the respective cross so you may not come across good moves in the majors and i mean once you enter you should be able to book profit that's what i refer as a good move during the early and late session normally they handle the major during such time you just watch and try to take my position in the case of you you can in jimbo on friday you said that the players were building sell position for hero don't the players have to drop last 3 4 100 uh, pips before rising when they are building such positions no uh, it is not that way when suddenly traders turn long around 1.26 1.27 technically when they become bullish and try to take the buy position they are expected to drop and hit their stops but not necessarily all the time drop about 300 to 400 pips if they drop 300 to 400 pips then it will come back to that of their original buy level because they still they would not have exited all their buy positions what they accumulated from 1.222 or 1.21 1.20 1.19 1.18 1. so all those positions they have to gain at least about 900 to 1000 pips and then book profit for about 300 to 400 pips that will work out but if they try to book profit immediately after gaining about 300 400 pips then they will come back to that of the same level the rest of the position they will not be able to exit in the event an unexpected calamity happens in the world and so they are abundantly cautious they only drop about 100 to 150 as a weak beginning for them so that technical traders will probably could view it as a good sell and buy trade opportunity once they breach the uh, support and stay below that of the support they will try to going for a sell and buy trade and the players will wait and show a little bit of profit and during the swing trades and when the traders find that such technical traders find that the going is good they increase the quantity of exposure in the market instead of doing one lot they could do uh, about five lots or 10 lots thinking that okay i'll book some partial profit once it drops to this level and if it drops further down then i'll book for the profit and that sort of estimates they could make and try to take sell positions about 6 lots 7 lots etc then the players without making much of a drop quickly reverse it using some trick either a rumor or a data release and things like that and once they trap the short sellers once the Uh, long holders liquidate their longs and turn short then the players absorb all the lower level shorts and once they buy it around 1.25 or 1.26 then they will not make for the drop in that then obviously they are expected to gain the levels for the up and book profit so that is why you come across intraday swings in the market because they have to handle either side of the trade and especially they find it like a hot cake when they find that traders are doing high level buys and low level sell as long as the traders continue to do this the players will be making up and down moves alternatively and try to earn from such trade so i'm not expecting about 300 400 pips drop in the case of euro and gbp and probably technically it may look like that so that it can induce the traders to go in for a short term then how about aud aud has made a strong comeback to that of 0.87 area still i am expecting it to make 
like a downward stop and when euro and gbp are making a drop probably it can come up to 0 0.8650 or 8670 and things like that and then subsequently gain the level and drop then will the low be set euro or us session in gbp so gbp you find that it is a making a lesser net change when compared to that of euro so when such things happen then probably they make initially a low set in the case of gpp followed by that low set in the case of euro that is how you can fine tune your reading of the market when they are handling using the net change so they may not simultaneously breach the low in both euro and gpp in the same time they could do a little bit of drop but breaching the low in the case of euro would happen already they had done the breaching of the low in the case of gpp for this particular session they could breach the low in the case of euro to start with then subsequently us session obviously i mean european session they have to drop a little more and make a low cut in the case of gpp so that that can create the bearish field in the market and then traders could think that okay why not i sell euro instead of gpp because gpp has already dropped so euro could drop further down they will try to sell but they may not drop euro and then gain the levels in the case of euro during the mid european session then the players will do the short covering afterwards they will drop euro and try to show the lower level then the traders will think that oh i missed the right opportunity because i was not aware of the market timing so obviously the market timings are very important for us to understand what could be the follow up moves in the market i will be presenting my trading system webinar uh, from tomorrow weekly twice so the schedule is available in the fx trade website probably i'll just show the display the camera over that of that particular page So you come across uh, my uh, author page. Once you click Dr. Subraman, you will it will lead to that of uh, author page, and there on the right hand side you find my trading system. Doing two webinars in a week, and for five weeks I am going to give it as a tenth anniversary special event because a lot of traders ask me. Some of the basic questions pertain into my trading system or my trading methodology. So I thought that it could be recorded and kept in this particular page at the bottom here, so that any newbie or anybody who has got a doubt with regard to my calls and with regard to my uh, expre expressions or the wordings what I use and the terminologies what I use and things like that, and you can just go through this webinar. So that you will be able to understand my style of trading. Then once you understand that, it will be easy for you to follow my webinars, Asian session webinars, and also the blog when I give the postings in the blog. Because when I am been fine tuning that market reading and try to give that okay, this could be the possible move and things like that. Many ask some fundamental questions. When exactly the European session starts, then it gives a real distraction, and obviously we cannot question it because they would enter into the market uh, as a newbie at that particular time. So obviously the serious traders will think that immediately they give the response even before I give any response to that. Then you go through all the blogs and posts or some of the recorded webinars, etc. In order to avoid it, for a full understanding of my trading system. Even though I have been giving it from that of uh, 2001-2002 till 2007 in FX Street in the form of question and answer sessions, in the form of <coughs> some of the earlier webinars, and they are not been recorded. And you come across in that very few uh, of them, the bottom of the page here, some of the question and answer sessions are I conducted in the form of uh, forex trading lab. Only four such things are available now, and I requested FX Street people uh, to kindly link it here 
so that you know those who wanted to know about how exactly i explained it and there is absolutely no change in the market from those times with regard to the pattern of operations of the market and also the intention reading the intention of the players etc so you can just click the link and you will find find the registration page will appear and you can register for that and probably you can hear it live and also later on when it is recorded you can just go through that of the recorded information available in fx trade archives and also in my author page so that you will not have some of the questions with regard to my timing swallowed in the market and also the explanation pertaining to different types of moves yeah rab asks whether it will be the low for this particular week most likely that will be the low what they are setting it during the european session or early east session normally they make the week beginning false moves <laughs> what are the session timings probably wait till tomorrow sir uh, gsg i will display the market timing uh, in the forthcoming webinar a uh, my trading system first webinar i'll explain why we need to follow the timing we have our chart system and also the technical analysis there you do not come across the timings of the market because the market is 24 hours and the, the charts might say that it is a descending channel so you won't be knowing when exactly the low will be set or when exactly the intraday high will be set so obviously we need the algorithm and that is what i developed and that algorithm shows the respective timings of the market so i will explain there can you elaborate the moves like euro is also near low and chf also near low so when euro and chf are near the low euro is showing the usd gaining move and when chf is near the low is showing the usd weakening move are they not contrarian moves they are just opposite one currency is showing the usd gaining move another currency is showing usd weakening move is referred as a contrarian move why they do it because they want to handle the cross so on the downside if they want to handle euro chf if they want to drop euro chf for the down then already we have seen it is 61 pips negative net change so you find that the downside euro chf is near the low how euro chf can be brought near the low when they drop euro and show a negative net change when they drop chf and show a negative net change then you find a cumulative effect of this almost a cumulative effect so 47 plus uh, 10 57 and if you ex exactly calculate the pip value then you will come across the 61 pips negative net change so roughly you can estimate there is no need to calculate the absolute pip range uh, pip value for those things you can find that when they are making a negative net change they are dropping it once they stop cutting the low, in the case of Euro CHF, during the mid session, or mid Japanese or mid European, because the focus is that there could be further drop during the early European session. So they can simultaneously drop Euro as well as simultaneously drop CHF and bring down Euro CHF till to a lower level because they are exactly holding near that of the low Euro CHF. That means they are willing to sell at 1.3307 just two pips short of the low so obviously when they are willing to sell here then they wanted to buy it at a lower level hitting the stops and try to buy it at a lower level that's what it refers to so in such a time you should avoid taking a buy position simply in the case of cross i'll explain also in my trading system how exactly the trades are to be selected whether you want to do a trade in a major or in a cross from time to time that I'll explain in my trading system webinar. And what is the, your view on AUD? What would be the good level to enter? So AUD could make a downward stop and below that of zero uh, point already there at the low in the case of Australian dollar. So zero point eight seven two one two four or the current level zero point eight seven two three is the low. They have made the net change to 51 pips negative net change so that is an indication that they want to drop to start with okay so when they go below that of the psychological level 87 
where exactly they form the low you just see nowadays you know that australian dollar they are able to make big moves just to trap the traders like 100 150 pips so don't be in a hurry in entering into the market and you might find it frightful uh, to catch the falling knife you can just allow the market to settle just wait for the market to settle and set the low then subsequently take the buy position if there is a potency to gain the level because after ga- taking the position the market should be able to give you the profit simply holding the position is of no use for then are you saying that 1.50 level is going to be held in chip so i am not telling like that so far they have been holding 1.50 when they are offering at 1.5019 the as or 1.5018 which is just short of 1.5004 about 10 to 14 pips so there is a likely chance that they could make a downward stop and before making a rise still the aggressive moves have not started and you know that they quickly make downward stop and an upward stop and so that only when your stops are there it will be hit when you try to buy they may not give you the buy unless and otherwise you keep a limit buy order current is a mentioned about webinar i am not able to understand what it is in case will the usdn drop also will it be below 87 they may not go below 87 it appears but they have already breached 89 area and come down and uh, trying to dip euro i mean try to dip usdn along with that of euro and gbp so they will just drop it slowly then subsequently in order to gain the levels during that of the us session they will make one more downward move in the case of usd and then that will bring in usd weakening move so you have to follow it carefully they just drop as a contrary move usd and then one quick go from 8950 to 18 i mean 8850 to 88 or 8780 80 in a very quick way then immediately you find that euro and gbp bounce up you know in order to give the triggers they do that and probably they will be hovering around that uh, 89 to 87 area in this particular week early of this week and then quickly gain the levels in the case of usdn because they are more doing more and more of lower level consolidation now okay. today's webinar be yeah today's webinar is being recorded you can send it to later and anurag outlook of gold today can we see it uh, regress downward more slow slide in gbp and silver follow that now as far as the big beginning is concerned they are expected to make a high level consolidation with a little bit of upward stop and in the case of gold and uh, in the case of gold and silver and then subsequently they are expected to drop so don't expect a quick drop today being the big beginning they are expected to make a high level i mean the consolidation around the current level with little bit of upward stop and inducing the traders to buy around 1210 1215 like that then subsequently from tomorrow they are expected to drop silver is also they will be trying to trade around 18 level and then subsequently make that drop what level can buy usdch usdch current net change to come across is 76 and the low is intact but when they drop euro they could make a quick downward stop and, and then rise or they may go up to that of the low and then rise so you try to watch so levels cannot be estimated let me tell you you can use the uh, technical analysis and find out what could be the possible support and there is no guarantee that the market has to respect such support you have to watch the live market code page and see exactly the pip variation and how we exactly they set the low and not breach the low for more than 30 minutes at that time if you try to take a buy position you will be able to keep stop at entry at least so if you theoretically calculate the uh, levels and practically if those levels are not being respected by the market you might feel disappointed so you have to practically see how exactly you can trade simply asking for the levels because the levels might give you a mental block and then you will be thinking all the time about the level and once the level comes you may not be able to buy
That is how the human mind is. What is a good level to sell GPT today? Again, everybody is asking only with regard to the levels for the selling and the buying instead of learning the process of trading. So everybody wants the end result or after taking the position, they want fully a profit without understanding how they are supposed to do the trading in order to get the profit. So ultimately, you know, in any business for that matter, the business process is one and the end result is the profit or the loss. So if you think about the end result all the time, you may not be able to have the mindset to undergo the process. Please learn to undergo the process step by step. Then you will be able to estimate at every time, okay, what could be my profit target on your own rather than just asking somebody. And because there are many people who ask me, okay, what is the system you are using? How much of profit you are earning out of that? They fail to understand, okay, what is the trading style I am following? It's simply how much of profit you are able to earn out of that. So if I use that particular system, will it work out? Or if I just automate the system, will it work out? Nothing will work out, sir, unless and otherwise you apply your mind and understand the logistics behind all the moves of the market. And only then you will be able to earn. Because you might think that an automatic system can eliminate your uh, fear or eliminate your greed and things like that, the psychological condition. But automatic system will not be able to understand the quick moves which is happening in the market like five tips up and five tips down and things like that. Whatever be the system you try to incorporate because it cannot go along with that of the big variations happening in the market. It will become stressful for that particular software also. So please keep in mind that you have to trade with a calm mindset. We have to develop the patience and we have to see that when exactly the quick move is happening in the market, and during such time, focus on the market without any fear and see that, okay, they are dropping with an understanding they are dropping to buy and hit the stops. They are rising to hit the stops and quickly book profit. So keep this as their approach. So if you know the weaknesses of your enemy, then you will be able to hit on the weakness and try to earn points against the enemy. So this is the logistics of my trading system. So Instead of asking the levels, you kindly focus on the type of moves happening in the market, then you will be really benefited. I am not trying to ridicule you or trying to uh, uh, just criticize you. It is not my objective. My objective is to change your mindset. Instead of asking for the levels, you ask, okay, what could be the range or where exactly they can take. Or are they going to take up the market up or are they going to take up the market down? And I have given the initial reference levels as the initial low and the initial high. How far they can drop it from there? How far they can rise above that of the high? And that sort of mindset, if we develop it, rather than simply asking, will Euro go to 1.2? Because I am not the player to make such moves. I can only try to read their intention and that too in an indirect reading of their intentions from their market moves. So, if you also develop the same technique of reading their intentions from their market moves, for that you have to understand what type of move they are doing now. Then you will be able to estimate. Because normally a successful businessman read the counterpart's intentions and only then he becomes a successful businessman. And he has to read it really whether he has got an intention to cheat or he has really got an intention to be associated and things like that. So we have to read the true intentions of our business partner if you want to become successful in such partnering. So it is a similar strategy that you have to read other man's mind. And Jason, uh, good to sell and buy trade in Euro and GDP. I will not recommend a sell and buy trade because if you fail to exit, then it might be riskier. And if you are smart enough and you are able to keep stop at entry and then subsequently book profit quickly when it is seen and don't become greedy when they are dropping it, then you can do sell and buy trade. Otherwise, 
Their comp trade will be up higher. I will trade up to the top. Okay, right. What about JBBCHF? You see that JBB is showing negative net change. CHF is showing negative net change. And during the European, mid European session, they could make a downward stop and then go up. Because always watch during the mid session how they are handling the cost. Then you will be benefited. In the answer. What is expected in the gap time between Japanese and the European session? Obviously, when I said that the expected move in the market is a slide towards close of Japanese session and a drop during that of the early European session. So, what could be the gap time move? The answer you should be able to say that they will form up as a false move. On another note, Euro JBB is a good sell around 84. Yes. If they show 84 level, it's okay. Always uh, keep it in mind that the high is not breached during the mid session or when they do a little bit of upward stop, and try to take a sell. Don't take any position near the psychological level like 0 0.84 because that may not work out all the time. Because normally the traders tend to look for the psychological levels and the players are trying to attack such psychological levels. So why to focus on psychological levels? Instead of being along with the herd, then you try to be away from the herd and just find out what are the weaknesses of the herd, what are the weaknesses of the players and try to trade. And invariably you will try to trade along with that of the players at that time. Okay, Kate. Will there be a uh, upside falls uh, move before the quick drop in European session? Yeah, that is what I explained. During the gap time, they could make the falls move. Then GSG gap time is at 78, 8 to 9 GMT between Japanese and the European session. I think we have to go through that uh, uh, things and anyhow wait for one more day. Tomorrow I'll explain the time. It is between. 7 and 7.30 GMT during the daylight saving system, the gap time. Between 7 and 7.30 is the gap time. So, Japanese session ends by 7. European session starts by 7.30. Why is CHF still dropping even Euro drop? You have to ask the players, sir, because they are just doing it that way and probably there may, have, there may be so many technical explanation, all those things, but the real intention is to drop Euro CHF and accumulate more buy positions from that of those who are holding around 1.42, 1.47, all those higher levels in Euro CHF because it was doing the consolidation at a long, for a pretty long time around 1.47 to 1.50 and the players want those long holders to liquidate. That becomes a huge profit for them. Yeah, that is why they are making a contrary move instead of an opposite move. When Euro is dropping, CHF is supposed to rise. Instead, they drop Euro as well as CHF, which is referred as a contrary move. And if you individually do technical analysis with regard to Euro, technical analysis of CHF, and individually analyze the fundamentals of Euro, fundamentals of CHF, it may appear true. But when you relate them, you will be able to understand they are purposely doing this sort of contrary move. Okay, so let me, the questions are over, let me just focus the camera over the top the focus page, the expected market for moves for today, Japanese session swing and slide moves, then European session, a quick drop and a form of move, and that form of move might be a quick one and might be short lived, and then again they are expected to slide during that of the European, US session, and then gain the level, so during the, uh, early European session and early US session, you can try to take buy position. If you are taking to take a buy position during early European session, once the new low has been set, you try to keep stop at entry once the position makes profit. And when it comes to US session, if they hit your stop, doesn't matter. You will be able to get a lower level buy and try to keep stop at entry afterwards. This is a better methodology rather than when a uh, low is seen during the European session. You think that it's better to enter into the US session. And during the US session, when they are not dropping that big 
then you repent that I missed that opportunity. So you try to focus on that area so that you will be able to fine tune your trading system. So I take this opportunity to sincerely thank you Street and also you people for your patient listening. I will come again tomorrow and try to review the market. And tomorrow there will be two webinars. One Asian session live market analysis by 5, between 5 and 5.30 GMT. Then another webinar between 10 and 10.45 GMT tomorrow. And that will be about my trading system. So see you again. Thank you for being here.